by the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. This extravagant language in the great litany was the first liturgical text in English coming from the pen of our 16th century forebear, Archbishop Cranmer. Border wars with France and Scotland prompted its wide use almost immediately. Border wars. Invasion, occupation, annexation. Nothing to joke about, but nothing new. A sudden grab for the Ukraine, an alleged manifest destiny as a justification to gobble up a continent and its inhabitants, the colonization of whole regions of Africa and Asia and South America, the creation of a new state in the Middle East for a persecuted people, Imperial Rome's claim on the strategic and economic crossroads of the Eastern Mediterranean in the provinces of Syria, Syria, Judea, and Arabia, where Jesus of Nazareth lived. Human voraciousness, the hunger of personal or national ego, the predatory appetites for more than just sustenance. Most violent campaigns to invade, occupy, and annex have some stated reasonable motive, but the consequences most often are catastrophic. Unchecked human hungers often have disastrous consequences. On Ash Wednesday of each year, we hear the classic program for the spring housekeeping of our inner life and our shared community life through Jesus' words and Matthew's gospel. We heard them last Wednesday for prayer, fasting, and the redistribution of wealth. Now, I've alluded to the world stage and humanity's obligations, but now I'd like to think about us our time about the season of Lent right here and right now. And don't get me wrong, I'm not against any of these things, um, but of the three classic practices, for me, fasting is the most perplexing. And I think we have to come clean on some of this. This year, for me, the fortunes and fates, the stars or the universe, or my guardian angel, or perhaps none other than the Almighty, conspired to try to teach me something about fasting. By way of background, about every two weeks or so, knowing that I don't have a car here in the city, Charles Shipley invites me to accompany him to the Marina Safeway in his car. It's my chance to really stock up and not have to walk or negotiate the bus with more than I can manage. And I love it. I go up and down every aisle, organic, fresh foods, no cookies or sugar, only non-toxic cleaning agents. I avoid extra packaging, and my cart is ready for the checkout. I brought my own bags. Then I see it. Two for one boxes of Cheez Its on sale. All bets are off. Worse, in the car, on the way home, the Cheez Its come out. And they're mostly gone in 10 minutes. It's fairly predictable. I have a witness. Now, this is true, you can't make this up. Last week on Ash Wednesday, I decided the night before I would do a spectacular, rigorous, God-pleasing, 
heaven-storming, attention-grabbing fast. Like my Muslim friends, I would start before dawn and avoid even a sip of water through all the hours of daylight on Ash Wednesday. I felt so righteous, awesome, worthy, and spiritually accomplished with my empty stomach and dizzy head already buzzing me during nine o'clock morning prayer. A bit later, before the noon Holy Eucharist on Wednesday, I knew there'd be confessions in the afternoon over in the Chapel of Grace, so I thought I'd just walk over there. I had a lot of nervous energy, and I would just make sure it was in order because we had had carnival the night before, and it was, good job, except for a few pieces of furniture and some gadgets on a cart from the tech crew. And as I moved the cart a bit further out of the way, I encountered what one of the workers had left behind, an open box of Cheez-Its. <laughs> I could smell them 10 feet away. Now, I won't share the outcome of my stones-to-bread temptation. But this is one way, if we're lucky, that angels can come to minister to us. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. The spiritual life is serious, but not deadly serious. Our needs, our emotions... Our personal challenges and goals, our desire for wholeness, our need for God are all serious. My experience, maybe yours, the minute I hear about things like Lenten discipline, fasting, almsgiving, prayer, suddenly they can become so daunting, I just chuck the whole thing. I don't need more deprivation. Hasn't the pandemic been enough? Rather than overthink and try to overdo it and give up or not try at all, I wonder what it would be like just to take a modest move toward deeper appreciation and dependence on divine help and divine humor. Perhaps a gentle move toward more gentleness and less reactivity. Perhaps letting go or simply sharing something without strings and without regrets. Each of us can figure out how to do this. For me, the temptations of Jesus are less interesting than the responses he gives to these not in good faith questions like that guy in the White House press room. His answers are gentle, almost humorous, to the devil's deceptive distractions. Anything that would keep Jesus from living and being God's beloved child, as he had just heard in his baptism. Yeah, I need bread to live, but not only that, I have other things in my heart and around around me that are nourishing and life-giving. All my energies and efforts are going there. Throw yourself down and blah, blah, blah. Jesus says, test God's protective power. I already know and have experienced and try to live in God's protective power. Get lost, Satan. Jesus did not focus on giving up anything or avoiding anything, but more on God's abiding presence, on God's gifts already living and working in him, giving energy toward deepening and growing the life of the Spirit and moving toward a full and more generous life. For a moment back on fasting, it is pretty good to abstain from chocolates and Cheez-Its. 
But Jesus knew, everyone knew, and we actually know what the prophet Isaiah had said. Is this not the fast I desire, said the Lord? To loose the bonds of injustice? To undo the thongs of the yoke? To let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. And then, of course, Jesus himself later, hunger and thirst for righteousness. Today's passage from Deuteronomy is particularly life-giving. Usually Deuteronomy has a bunch of laws and rules, but today it's really a sweet and wonderful command. God is telling God's people, newly arrived in the promised land after leaving slavery in Egypt and wandering in the wilderness, once you've worked and journeyed, after you've taken care and tended, you got yourself here this far, here it is, take a basket, fill it with the first and best fruits you've managed to grow, and bring those to God. Today I declare, name the good things in us and in our life and offer them. Name our heart's treasure and bring it. Be grateful for these things. Ask for their increase, their continuation. It is good to fast or to avoid what's dangerous, but it's also good to declare what's worthwhile what's worth keeping and tending and growing and asking God for more and giving back. What good actions, desires, hopes, dreams, memories are already in your heart and what do you want to happen with them? This is the important stuff we could be putting into our thoughts, intentions, resolutions and actions this Lent. This time, which is actually Easter-focused, new life-focused, freedom-focused, lived in this life we have. Because Lent, because your spiritual life, my spiritual life, our shared life as God's people in this place is not a religious game or some cheap overlay on top of our real life. We heard St. Paul remind us today, the word is near you. It's on your lips. It's in your heart. Our real life, our real story, our real spiritual life is already present. It's awaiting, deepening, strengthening, and offering. It's the only life we have. It's the only life we've been given, the only life we've been asked to tend and take care of and to share. So we might ask what we will tend and to de desire to grow in our heart this spring. So now I bring the first of the fruit that you, O oh God, have given me. Now set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you and everyone around you shall celebrate with all the bounty the Lord your God has given you into your house. Though there will always be some wilderness struggle, there's also the bounty of milk and honey. Let's strain to listen to the word in our heart. Sometimes I hear the wrong voice, tempted to think and feel God didn't or won't or can't provide enough. Then I falsely start to believe deep down I am not enough. That's when I get crazy, desperate, selfish. When you hear the accuser lying to you about yourself, you may not be able to beat him down under your feet. Just tell him to get lost. 
Listen to the truth about yourself, the truth about us. And lift up that small, wonderful top layer of the good things about you and about your life and offer them to the one who will feed and satisfy, bless and delight in you.